For almost 20 years, since 2004, schools in England have been encouraged to take part in Anti-Bullying Week. Unfortunately, more and more schools are, cho are choosing to get actively involved. Furthermore, for almost 10 years, since 2012, the United Nations has recognised an International Anti-Bullying Day on the 4th of May. There is no doubt that bullying and harassment can blight, even destroy, a child's experience at school. And yet, despite the high-profile high nature of the issue and the numerous strategies to deal with it, bullying remains a very real issue for at least a minority of pupils in most schools. So why is bullying such a problem? Well, one reason, of course, is that bullying can take many forms, physical, verbal, psychological. It's not always immediately obvious that a child is being bullied. And, of course, there are many explanations as to why the victims won't come forward, not least because they don't want to run the, ga the gauntlet of further bullying because they are perceived as snitches. And the reasons for bullying are also, of course, so varied from the current high-profile issues of sexual harassment, homophobia, racial harassment. There are also, of course, the traditional reasons for bullying, because a child is tall or short, because a child is very bright, or the opposite, because a child is popular or unpopular, because of the colour of a child's hair, or simply because the victim is seen as being different or as an easy target. But of what we can be sure is that for the victim, whatever the cause, whatever the category of bullying, the consequences are always unpleasant. So how do we deal with bullying? Well, first of all, we must always provide opportunities for the victims to speak out. Honesty boxes, safe spaces, or simply making staff available to speak to pupils privately and away from the public glare. Such an environment of listening and listening safely not only supports the victim, it also sends out a very clear message to the culprits that the issue will be taken seriously and they will be caught. Secondly, we must be absolutely clear as to what we mean by bullying. In 2018, the Department for Education produced a document called Sexual Violence and Sexual Harassment Between Children in Schools and Colleges. And although this looks specifically at one type of bullying, it defines harassment as actions that violate a child's dignity and or make them feel intimidated, degraded or humiliated to make someone feel intimidated, degraded or humiliated. That is a very clear baseline definition of bullying. Thirdly and finally, where guilty bullies are caught, they must be sanctioned, up to and including exclusion and even permanent exclusion. The fact that an action merits a punishment, that in itself sends out a message that those actions are wrong. But equally, by resorting to exclusion where necessary, we make it clear that actions that threaten, humiliate, degrade or frighten others are not wanted in school and are not tolerated. Everyone, child and adult, has a right to be free from intimidation, harassment and fear. And that right must be promoted protected and enforced. 